Hello everyone, welcome to this live stream. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, today we're going to be going over using Cinemachine with the timeline. I'm the host, Jonathan Gonzalez. I will be taking a look at chat from time to time. If you have any questions about anything that we're going to be covering in this uh, live stream. So I did post a link. Uh, I don't believe it's clickable, but there, there's a link in the chat. Uh, it's for a Unity short called Book of the Dead. I do highly recommend watching that. It is uh, pretty impressive. It's, it's a little bit better than the Atom series that, that I've discussed before. But that's in a chat. You can also just look up Book of the Dead uh, from Unity and you can see that short. But it, it, it utilizes a lot of the same techniques that we're going over here in terms of using the timeline, using things like Cinemachine. But in there, they, they improve things quite a bit because they have about a bit more control over the render pipeline. So that's going to be coming in Unity 2018. And I'm quite excited about it. Now, for this live stream, we're going to be going over using Cinemachine. We're not going to be covering all the aspects of using Cinemachine, but we are going to be covering a few different cameras. And we're going to be creating somewhat of a similar timeline sequence as what we had in the previous live stream. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to Unity now. Okay, so here we are in Unity. We're gonna be going over how to create this track right here. So we have a couple of uh, different virtual cameras. That's how Cinemachine operates. It utilizes virtual cameras. We're not using multiple cameras like we did in previous live streams. Now we're using virtual cameras, which utilize the one camera that we have within our hierarchy. Now within here, we have a virtual camera over here and we have a number of different virtual cameras over here. Now this right here, this little ladder looking thing is kind of like a rail system for a camera. So the way this is going to work is we're gonna start off with one camera over here. This is a virtual camera. And we're gonna have it going down this rail system through this hallway. So it's gonna be sitting on this rail system basically. And it's gonna be moving down this rail until we get down here. Now, once it gets down here, this is gonna be the last waypoint within this rail system. And we're then going to have it look at this specific player. Now, I did make some modifications to one of the animations, which is this character kind of laying on the ground. And I did uh, create a very short animation of that where he's just kind of laying on the ground and it's looping over and over. So once we get to the very end of this uh, track here, we're then gonna add in a target for this camera to actually look at this player. So as it starts going down that rail, it's then going to focus in on this player on the ground. We're then going to transition into a second timeline and we're gonna be going over how we can use multiple timelines uh, within one timeline. So we can time these different timelines uh, all in sequence. So we're then going to sequence into a new timeline. And this timeline is gonna be very similar to what we created in the previous live stream, which is our character starting off with an animation of him coming up off the ground, then going into an animation where he's looking at his hands. And then we're gonna also add in a idle animation. We're no longer going to have a separate animation for or a separate uh, script applied to this character to be able to actually control him at, after the end of the sequence. We're just going to purely look at the cinematics of all this. So within this scene right here, we're going to have three cameras and I'll actually hit play so you guys can see how this looks, but I want to go over a quick preview of what we have in our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize this. All right. So this is the game view. And we'll see what we're going to be creating. Okay, so I still have the audio playing in the background, but the camera's going down the hallway, and there's actually two turns in here. So it's going down that rail system. Okay, so there's our player on the ground. Now, I didn't add in the looking motion at the very end. We're going to be adding that in this live stream. But now we switch into a new sequence, which is our second timeline. And the camera is now going to be following the player's movement. So I'm not controlling the actual camera itself. I'm not animating the camera. All this is with Cinemachine. Okay, and there we go. We zoom in. And this is actually a, a couple of cameras that are kind of blending together. So we're going to be going over how to do that. Okay, and that's the end of that sequence. And we have a bit more time. We're going to be going over how to add in a simple fade in. And then maybe we'll take a look at uh, adding in a new sequence for our robot character. We're not going to be using the robot character more than likely in this live stream. But if we do have enough time, we'll add this in for uh, this live stream as well. 
Okay, so we're going to start off with a blank scene and we're going to be building this all from scratch. So I'm going to go into my cinema scene, cinema machine start. And within here we have our robot character and our player. So the player is in the exact same position as before. Okay, so we're going to be creating a new timeline for him. We're going to be creating two timelines like before, and we're going to be doing something very similar to what we had before in terms of animations. So I'm just going to set up the timelines first. I'm going to create an empty game object in here, and we're going to store all of our timelines in here. So I'll call this timelines. And within there, I'll create a new timeline, which will be an empty game object. I'll call this timeline underscore mid. Okay, I'm going to create this. And it's going to create a timeline for me. I'm just going to remove that extra timeline at the end. I don't believe you guys can see what I'm seeing right now, but that's fine. I'm just saving that new timeline. And it's going to add an animator, which I don't need. And I also don't need this animation track. So I'm just going to right click on it and delete it. Let's go back up here. We don't need the animator either since we're not animating this. Okay, so we just have our playable director. Now, just like before, we're going to add in our character. And then we're going to add in some animations for this. Now, I want to keep this timeline locked. So if I select something else, it'll go away. So I want to make sure that this is locked. So I'm going to click on the little padlock icon here, and you'll see that this is available for all of our panels. So I'll click on the padlock to lock that in place. And then I'm going to add in a animation track for the human character that we have here. Now, this character already has a animator controller or an animator. It's going to have an animator controller as well, but it has an animator. So I'm going to drag that into the slot there we go and now we can add in our animations so in the models folder i have the animations that i want to use there's actually two of them that i have for the standing up i did create a duplicate so this is the lay loop that we just saw in the preview it's basically just him just staying in that one pose over and over again so i'm going to be using this first one lay stand up and we're kind of going backwards here because this is going to be the second sequence, but I want to go over uh, this second sequence first because we are going to be going over how to use virtual cameras. And I want to cover the virtual camera process first before we get a bit more in depth with the like dolly track cameras. So we have our first animation. Let's just scrub through this, make sure it works. Okay, that does work. Let's add in our second animation, which is the character looking around. Okay, and once again, I want to blend this. So I'm going to push this in closer until it starts blending. And let's take a look at the blend. And I think that looks pretty smooth for the most part. And then finally, after he looks around, we're then going to go into an idle animation state. Uh, in the previous live stream, we went over uh, having control of this player with a script. But since we're not doing that anymore, I don't want him to just automatically stop right after that. Instead, I want to go into an idle animation state. So I have that set up in a character control folder. Okay, and once again, I'll blend that in as well. Okay, and there we go. I'm gonna go and switch my timeline here to seconds. So this is roughly about 23, 23.45, that'll be fine. Now, one thing to note about navigating within this timeline, you can actually hold down your middle mouse, you'll get a little hand icon up here, and then you can drag this around. So if you're trying to like move around to a specific point and you don't want to go to the very beginning of the timeline, you can do that here as well. Okay, so we have our character. Now we need to take a look at how we can use cameras with this. We don't want to use the main camera and duplicating that over and over again. Instead, what we want to do is we want to use Cinemachine and we want to use virtual cameras. So let's go over the process of using this. Now you will need to import Cinemachine. This is a standalone asset. It is a asset by Unity Technologies but you can find this on the asset store. So to find the asset store, you can go to window, asset store, and then just look up Cinemachine. You'll need to import that. And once you import that, you'll see Cinemachine in the project panel along with the gizmos. You'll also find Cinemachine at the very top once you've imported this properly. Now we're not gonna be going over every single camera in here. As you can tell, there's a number of different cameras in here. We're just gonna be looking at the virtual camera and the dolly camera with track. <coughs> So we're going to start off by creating a virtual camera. 
Okay, so once we create this, you can see that something gets created. It says CMVCAM1. Now with this, this is going to be a virtual camera that's also going to work with our main actual physical camera. So here we have a number of different scripts on here. This will essentially allow us to track our player either by looking at him or actually following him. But if we take a look at the camera, we now have a Cinemachine brain script on this. This will allow us to actually control the main camera based off these virtual cameras. So if we take a look at our VCAM, uh, we can go into our scene and it should be right about here. I'm not sure why it places it there. I guess that's because it's at the direct center. But I'm going to go ahead and move this over. And you can move this over like any other game object in your scene. I'm going to drag my scene window down just so we can see what this camera is looking at. So again, this acts just like a camera. So I can move this around and you can see whatever I'm moving around with the virtual camera, that's what we're actually seeing. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And just move it out a bit. Okay, so for this first camera, I'm going to close this off. I keep selecting things within the lab. I'm going to make sure that I can't select anything from the lab. So let's see. Um, I'll just leave that as is. I have to change the layer, but I'll leave it as is. So this is what our current virtual camera is looking at. Now, if we want to track this player, what we can do is assign a look at transform within the top section here. Now, when we do that, we're going to see a few different options appear. So if we hit play right now, it's going to go through this timeline sequence. Okay. And the camera is just going to stay there. It's not going to move or do anything of that sort. So we want to be able to track his head as he's going up. So from here, we're going to go into our human character. We're going to add the head bone as he transform. Okay, so there is the head. I'm just going to drag it over into the look at slot. And right when I do that, you can see this new uh, color scheme appears. So I'm going to open this up a bit. Now within here, we have this kind of like a see-through box. This is our target area. And within here, basically what we're doing is we're tracking some sort of target. Anything within this box is basically saying that, hey, we're going to track the target. And as long as it's within this box, we're going to keep the camera in that position. Once this target right here, that little uh, yellowish square, once it moves into the blue areas, then the camera is going to start moving. So we can make a, a few different adjustments to this, but let's just give this a quick try to see how it works with the default settings. So if I hit play, you'll see the camera start moving to track his head. Okay, so there we go. It starts moving up. And actually what I want to do, I want to play this in the scene mode as well. So I'm going to uncheck maximize on play so we can actually see how this is working with the uh the, the view here okay so there is the target and you can see it's within here and as long as it's moving within this box it's not going to move the camera but once it moves into the blue area that's when it starts moving the camera Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what each one of these colors represents. Like I mentioned before, this is essentially our tracking area. So any kind of movement within here, as long as the target is within that box, it's not going to move the camera. Once it moves into the blue areas, then it knows it needs to move into that area. Now, the red areas right here are basically our, uh, our hard limits. So if the target seems to get into the red, the camera is going to instantly move to that new position because it doesn't want to lose that focus on that target. So you can increase and decrease each one of these zones. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Now we have two main sections in here. We have the body and the aim. The aim is going to be used whenever we're using look at. The body is going to be used whenever we're trying to follow a specific target. In our case, we're not following a target. So we're going to go ahead and close that up for now. Now for the aim, we are going to be looking at a specific target. So here we can make adjustments to this. We're not going to be going over all of these settings. We're just going to be going over the main ones that are important to us. So the first one that I want to take a look at is the damping right here. We have the horizontal and vertical damping. Now what this is going to do is essentially uh, create a delay between how the camera is going to be moving. So right now it's pretty responsive with a low value of 0.5 for the vertical and horizontal damping. The target is going to be always within view fairly quickly. 
But if we were to increase this quite a bit, let's just increase the vertical damping. That's going to affect the movement of the camera moving up and down. We're gonna increase this to say 10. Okay, and then we'll give this a quick test. So I'm gonna hit play. Okay, so you can see right now, the camera is still trying to catch up to where that target is at. And you can see it's gonna be a little bit slower to catch up to that target. Now 10 is a pretty high number, as you can tell. It's gonna take a long time to actually find that target again. Now we can do the same thing for the horizontal damping, but in our case, we don't really have a whole lot of horizontal movement, so that's not really going to affect us that much. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down to 0.5. Okay, I want this to be fairly responsive. And now we're gonna take a look at the screen X and screen Y. And we're gonna take a look at all these right here. We're not gonna be taking a look at the bias down below, but the screen X and screen Y is essentially gonna move our camera into a specific position. Now note, I can actually left click and drag by holding down in here. And you can see that I can move the camera. So I'm essentially moving the camera's view. So if I wanna get a better view, I just move and drag it over here or over here. Okay, and as you can see, as I'm moving this over, it is going to be adjusting the screen X and screen Y. So if you're one of those people that just wants to like kind of eyeball it, if you will, you can just do this yourself. But if you wanna get more precise, you can then adjust this with these sliders. Oh yes, there was a question LJ Simpson said, is there a way to ease the move when it jumps to the red zone? Yeah, the damping like, like, like mentioned. So this is the screen X and screen Y, so you can manually adjust this if you wanna get more precise, or you can just do this once again. Now down below that, we have the dead zone. The dead zone is this box right here. Now, depending on what you set this to will determine also how far that camera is gonna be moving, how quickly it's gonna be moving, because if we adjust the width and the height, let's just increase this quite a bit. Like I mentioned before, as long as the target is within this window, the camera is not gonna be moving at all. The smaller that target is, that smaller that window is, the more the chances are that the target's gonna go outside of that window, in which case the camera would have to move more. So right now we have the target in the middle. If I hit play again, actually I'll just go ahead and just preview this from the timeline. It should work the same way. So as I start moving this, the camera isn't going to move as much. Now, if we exaggerate this, we make the, say the dead zone um, height a bit higher. So like this, it's gonna move a lot less. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the width. So it's still gonna track that target, but the camera's not gonna be moving as much because it doesn't need to track that target as uh, accurately because it's still within this area that we need to track it in. Okay, so that is the dead zone width and height. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back down. And for this as well, you can also, if you hover over these edges, you can actually pull them apart as well. Now, if you make this too small, if you make it something like this, obviously it's gonna be moving a lot more. So if I scrub through this, the camera's gonna move a lot quicker because it needs to keep that target within that smaller window. Uh, so there's another question by LJ Simpson. Is this something you generally play around with depending on the content? Yes, obviously this is something that you would use for more cinematic scenes or maybe even film. So it's really highly dependent on what your content is. If you're going for a specific view, maybe uh, if you're coming from like a film background, I'm sure you would use different types of shots and things of that sort to get a better visual look of what you're trying to represent within your game or your film. Uh, so it's really up to you. You have a ton of options to be able to control all that stuff. Now in our case, we're just kind of creating a generic cutscene sequence. Now down below that we have the soft zone. So the soft zone is the blue area. Now the soft zone is basically, if the target goes into that blue area, then we're going to start moving the camera. But if we go into the red zone, it's gonna be much quicker. It can't leave the red area, so it's gonna move it instantly if it feels that the uh, red zone is getting, uh, if the target is getting too close to the red zone or it is within that red zone. So let's adjust the width of the soft zone. I'm gonna go ahead and make this real small so we can see what that means. Okay. 
So something like that. And I'm going to scrub through this. Now the target is going to stay within that window for the most part. You can see it, it is pretty accurate, but if I increase the damping, maybe I increase this back up to 10, it's going to be a bit uh, lazier to actually catch up to that target. And it doesn't really look like it's going to, um, let me do this in play mode. Sometimes when we're previewing this like this, it doesn't allow it to actually utilize the damping. So we'll just hit play. Okay, so this should reach the red area. You can see right there, it doesn't let, allow it to go past that red zone. So once it touches that red zone, it's kind of like it's pushing the camera upward. Okay, so the blue can be uh, the like the, uh, I guess the buffer zone between the red and where the actual target should be in the center point. Okay, so I think we have a, a general idea of, of how this works with the aim. Now let's take a look at how we can use this within our timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and try to reset these back to where, where they were. So I believe this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I'll just set these all at 0.5 or so. And that's right at 0.5. The dead zone should be a little bit bigger or smaller, I should say. The soft zone should be bigger. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is our one camera. Now I wanna use this within my timeline. So to add this to the timeline, I'm gonna add in a new track. So if I right click in here, uh, we can go down to cinemachine.timeline and then we can add in a cinemachine track. Now, if we expand this out a bit, you can see it's looking for a cinemachine brain. Now that is gonna be our camera, like I mentioned before. This has the cinemachine brain script. So let's add that into our track, okay? And now what we need to do to add in a new track is right click in here, go down to add cinemachine shot clip. And this is gonna be one of our virtual cameras. So right now, if we expand this out, it just says Cinemachine Shot. We actually need to assign a virtual camera to use with this. So I'm gonna be creating a number of different virtual cameras. So I wanna group these together just like I did with my timelines. So I'm gonna create a new empty in here and I'll call this Virtual Cameras. I'll drag this in there, there we go. Now for the Cinemachine Shot, I want the first camera to be the CM VCam one. I'll drag this in here. And there we go. You can see that we now have a new name in our track here. And this entire section refers to that virtual camera. I'm going to adjust the horizontal or the vertical damping rather back down to 0.5. So it's a bit more accurate. Okay. And once again, the, the preview isn't always up to date. So sometimes you have to hit play to make sure it works properly. Okay, it's pretty accurate for the most part. I may want to ad adjust the uh, that little window, but I'll leave it as is for now. Now, I wanna add in a second virtual camera, which is gonna be placed behind him. So this is something that we kind of did with the last live stream where we had a second camera appear right behind him as he's going into that look around animation. So I'm gonna decrease the length of this track down to the about 10 second mark, right where we start the second animation where we're blending in. And we're gonna add in a second virtual camera. Now I can right click in here and add another shot clip. And from here, I can actually create a new virtual camera just from here. We can click on create. So we have VCam 2 now. I'll drag this underneath our virtual cameras. Okay. And that's already assigned because we created it from that button. And we have all the same settings as before with any other virtual cam. So if we scrub through this, we should see that we have two different cameras. Now we need to adjust the position of that second camera. So I can select that second camera. And one of the cool things about using these virtual cams is that you have basically all the same uh, workflow as working with a traditional camera. So with this virtual cam selected, I can go in here, adjust my view in the scene view, go up to game object, align with view. Okay, and I need to turn off this one so we can see that one. Or let me click on solo. So if you click on solo, you can then uh, take a look at that virtual cam because sometimes some of these are a little bit hard to uh, determine which camera you have selected. 
So with this VCam 2 selected, click on solo, and now we're just looking at that one specific camera. Now it looks like it's off slightly, but I'll leave it as is. We are gonna be using tracking with this as well. So I wanna add in the head transform. I'll just go back to the original cam, click on the head from here, and now I have it selected. Go back into VCam 2 and just drag it over. Okay, let's go and click on solo once again. So now we have the camera where we want it. It's gonna be tracking the head, but this time from behind. Okay, so we have the first cam. Actually, let me uncheck solo. There we go. And then for the last idle portion, what I wanna do is I actually wanna have a combination of two different cameras. And we're gonna be going over how we can kind of blend between different cameras. So I'm gonna add in a third camera. And the reason why we're gonna do this is because we wanna blend between different cameras. And the reason why I wanna have a third camera, I'll show you real quick, is if we try to blend between these two different cameras, you can see that they're on opposite sides from each other. So to blend these, all we have to do is left click and drag it into the other cam, just like we would with say the animations. So if I scrub through this, you'll see, it, it, you'll be able to see in the scene view here, as we blend between them, that first camera is going to come through the character and then rotate around to match the second virtual camera. And obviously that doesn't look very uh, nice or realistic. So we wanna have a third camera, which is closer to this position and rotation. So that way we can just zoom in on the character uh, using the third cam. And then we're gonna have a fourth camera, which has a different field of view. So I'm going to move this back out. We're gonna be using the same virtual cam one up here. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it right after the VCam 2 uh, shot. So we're going from that backwards uh, or that back camera back to the front camera again. And then from here, we're gonna have a fourth camera and we're gonna blend into that fourth camera, which is gonna have a different field of view. So what I'll do is, uh, yeah, we'll create a new shot. Okay, we'll create a new camera for this as well. And this is gonna be our third camera. And what I'll do is I need to position this in the same spot here. I'm gonna solo it so I can see where it's at. I'll place it about right here. So go to game object, align with view. Okay, so this is our third camera. And actually to get that kind of zooming in effect, we could adjust the, the field or the, what do you call it, the field view, or we could just keep it right here because it's close enough to the body where it, it's going to mimic that effect of zooming in on the character. So if we push this third camera into that first camera, and I'm going to extend this out a bit, we're gonna get that effect of zooming in. Okay, so right now we're zooming in between this camera, we're blending in between this camera and this camera giving us that effect of zooming in on the character. So I'm just going to extend that out to the very end and I'm blending this over the entirety of that first uh, camera shot right here which means that once we transition into that third shot right here, we're then instantly gonna go into that zooming in motion. Okay, so once again, we'll hit play, see how this looks in its entirety. Okay, he's getting up. We have that first camera. We're gonna go into the second camera as he's looking around. And then finally, we're gonna go into our third camera, which is blending in and zooming in. Okay, and that's it. That's all we're doing for this first timeline. Now, this is actually gonna be the second timeline. We're gonna be using this within another timeline, but now that we kind of understand how the virtual cameras work, we can then use this with a track. So I'm done with this timeline. I'm gonna unlock it so we don't have this available anymore. And I'm gonna create a new timeline. I'm gonna right click in here, create a new empty. We'll call this timeline track. Okay, and I'm gonna create a new director component. I'm going to save this in the, just in the main project uh, panel.
Okay, once again, I don't need the animation for this. And I don't need the animator, so I'll remove that as well. Okay, so for this track, I'm gonna go and switch to my scene view for now. It'll be easier to work with. What we wanna do is we wanna create a track that goes all the way through this environment. And we wanna have a camera that actually follows that track and is animated to uh, meet up with this character at the very end. And then we'll switch to a second sequence, which is the timeline that we just created. So we need to create a dolly track. We'll do that by going up to Cinemachine. Then we're gonna go down to Create Dolly Camera with Track. Okay, it's gonna be placed at zero, zero, zero. I wanna start this off over here. And right when you create this, it may seem a little bit confusing. Uh, it actually starts off with a camera and you don't really see the track. And the reason why you don't see the track is because the track is made up of waypoints. So I'm gonna go ahead and move both these underneath the same uh, virtual camera group. So it created the VCAM4 and it also created the Dolly track. We're gonna start off with the dolly track first. So the way I want this to work is I want the track to start off right here. This will be the first waypoint. Then as we go through this entire tunnel, we're gonna be adding waypoints through here. We're gonna curve it around this curve and this curve, and then we'll have straight areas through here. And then it'll end right here with the last waypoint. So to take a look at this uh, smooth path script, at the very top, we have our resolution. Uh, we'll be going over that in a moment when we actually create our track. But then we also have the path color. To actually see this, we need to add in at least one waypoint. So we click the plus icon here, and we may see a little bit of it. We'll see a um, one waypoint, and I'm not, oh, it's over here, that's why. I need to select that track. Let me go ahead and deselect that and select it again. I can move this entire thing over here. Okay, so that is gonna be our first waypoint and you'll see that it has a little sphere with the number of that waypoint. If we add in more, you can see it starts to create that track, but it's pointing in the wrong direction. So I wanna rotate this to face the other direction. So this will be a negative 180. And be careful if you're trying to move this entire track uh, if you have a waypoint selected, it's gonna be moving that waypoint around. So usually I just deselect it and select it again, and then you can move the entire track. Now I want this track to be about in the middle of this hallway. I think that's good right there. Now at the very top, we have our resolution. And it may not make a whole lot of sense right now. If we increase this, you can see it adds a bit more of those uh, tracks and this can increase or decrease the speed of that camera. So if you need to uh, make it a bit more even, you can increase the resolution, or if you have too many tracks, you can also decrease it as well. So I'm just gonna leave it at its default of 20. And down below that, we have the colors for uh, basically the path color being active and inactive. And then we have the width, which is just for visual purposes. I'm gonna increase this a bit. And again, that's only for visual purposes. It doesn't affect how the track works. And then we can add in more points. So I wanna have a total of about eight waypoints. So we're gonna have the starting waypoint at the end here, and we're gonna add in more points. So I'm gonna add in a few more. And then what I'll do actually, before I add in more waypoints, I wanna start placing these. It'll be easier to do that. So that second waypoint, which is the first one here, I'll just pull on it. And I'll pull on it until I get to that starting of the curve. So right about here. I'll add in a new waypoint. And now I can just move this over and it's gonna start curving. So I wanna place this about right here. Now this is not gonna be perfect. Uh, if you add in more waypoints, you can get a bit tighter with the turns, but I'm just gonna leave this as is right about here. Let's make sure that that camera is not going to run into anything and it doesn't look like it will. Okay, and then we'll add in a few more. So we're gonna add in maybe two more waypoints in here. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing as over here. We're gonna add in another waypoint, which is gonna start at the turn. So we're gonna have a waypoint right here, and I'm gonna have one more waypoint all the way down here. So we probably won't need eight waypoints. We'll see.
Let's add in a few more. So this one got pushed in a bit, so let me push it out. And this one will come down here. And actually, I'll probably need to add in, that's looking a bit too much of a curve right there. So I'll push this in. I'll push this one back and I'll add in another keyframe at the end right here. So we're gonna have a total of seven keyframes, which is fine. All right, and you can continue tweaking this to add more keyframes, stuff like that. You can see it does get a bit uh, curvy right here. And it looks like I increased the Y value for a few of these. So I'll set those back down to zero. I don't want any kind of elevation with this camera. Okay, and that should be about it. Basically, I just wanted to stop right at the beginning of where that uh, camera is for the starting of the second sequence. Okay, so that is it for the track itself. That's all we have to do is we just have to create the waypoints and then we have to uh, play some wherever we want. Now, we, if we go back to our VCam 4, this is already set up to use that dolly track. So if we take a look at the body, you can see right now we don't have anything for the aim. So it's uh, saying we don't have a look target. That's fine, we'll be adjusting that in a moment. But if we go into the body, we're now using tracked dolly. So it has the path already set up, dolly track one. And here we have the path position. Now the path position, the path position is currently set up to use uh, the first waypoint, which is zero. As you start increasing this, we may need to adjust the uh, position of that starting uh, camera. You can see it was starting off a little bit further out. So I'm going to move that camera. Okay, so I'll move the camera right there at the very beginning of the track. And the path position is going to allow us to go down that track. Now, I want this camera to actually follow the track itself as it's moving down. So if we go in here, we can change the camera up to use the path. We can use path normal, so on and so forth. I'm just going to use path. Okay, so as it's going down the path, and it does have an offset right now, hence why it's not perfectly following the track. So I can adjust the offset right here for the X, Y, and Z. I'll just set these all down to zero. And now it should follow that path perfectly. Now you'll notice that in here we do have a few areas that are wider than the other areas right here. So it is going to be going a little bit faster through these turns. We can adjust the resolution to uh, better uh, approximate how fast it's going to be going throughout the entire track. So we can go back to the dolly track and adjust the uh, resolution. I think for the most part it is going to be a little bit slower through here, a little bit faster around the turns. Uh, again, we can adjust the resolution or we can uh, better place the, the waypoints a little bit further away so they're more evenly spaced, but I'll leave it as is for now. Now, if I bring down my scene window, we can see what this camera is looking at. So I'm just going to scroll through this path position. So it's going down the hallway and then at the very end, it's going to be looking at this character. So we want to animate the path position. Right now, we can either set this through script or we can use this in a timeline as an animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to zero. And we're gonna be creating a new timeline specifically for this tracking of the camera. So we have that already set up. Let's add in a track for that. We're gonna to go to add, cinema machine time, cinema machine track. Okay, let's add in our brain, which is the camera. We'll add in a shot. So the add cinema machine shot clip, and this is going to refer to that fourth camera that we created. I'm gonna go and lock this real quick just so we don't lose it. So CMV cam four, there we go. And right now it doesn't have any kind of animation. It's just using this one camera. Now there is one thing to note. If we, uh, if we hit play real quick, let's see if it'll work. If we hit play, it should start off with that first timeline. 
And that's because we don't have any kind of timing between these timelines. And I wanna use that second timeline, the one that we created first, we wanna use that as the second timeline. So we can add that to our timeline as well. So I'll add that in as well. So I'll right click in here and we're gonna be creating a control track. Now the control track doesn't actually have a slot here. It was a bit confusing at first, but if you left click on it, you actually have to, need to you actually need to uh, right click on it rather, go to add control playable asset clip. Now when you do that, you're gonna get this track and you need to assign a game object. Now we can use this to control a playable director. So we're gonna be adding in our first timeline that we created, which was timeline mid into the source game object slot. Now, if I move this over, that timeline is gonna start whenever we are done with this first track. So if I scroll through this, it's then going to transition into that second timeline. Now, if we give this a play, you can see it starts off with that first camera and then it transitions into that timeline. Okay, so far so good. Now, I also wanna animate this uh, track for the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a group for the tracks of this timeline, and then we'll keep this control track separate. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this control track to timeline mid. So there's a question from LJ Simpson. Can you free the camera so the viewer can adjust rotation of view while the author controls the direction of motion? Um, yeah, I believe you can. I have I have seen Cinemachine being used for real time things where you can uh, you know look around with the camera and also be able to track stuff. I haven't really used that a whole lot, so I can't see for sure, but I believe you can. Okay, so I renamed that control track. I want to add in a new group for this because we are going to be adding in a second track, which is going to be an animation track. So I'm going to create a new track group and I'll rename this. I really wish that Udemy would make it easy to rename from down here instead of having to go up here, but I'll call this timeline underscore track. And I'll drag the camera underneath there. I'll move this to the very top. Okay, so from within here, I'm gonna create a new animation track. And this animation track is gonna control the, uh, the path of that first camera. So I'm talking about this camera right here. So we're looking for an animator. Now, one thing to note, if you drag in a virtual camera or any game object that doesn't have an animator, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. If I drag it in here and it doesn't have an animator, we're gonna get this pop-up that says, create animator on whatever object you're trying to assign. So I do want that, so it's gonna create it for me. And you can see now we have an animator component applied. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna start off with a path position of zero. So let's animate this. I'm gonna click on the record. And to add a keyframe here, we can just right click on the path position and add key. It should add a key right there with the path position set to zero. And I wanna go all the way down to the very end. I'll switch this to seconds. Okay, so this will last, I believe when I tested this out with the other one, six seconds or so was about right. It wasn't too fast, it wasn't too slow. So I'm gonna increase this to about right here. And right at six seconds, I'm also gonna add in the second path value. So this will be, we have, uh, let's see, we have a seven keyframe, well actually eight keyframes, but we wanna end on seven. So let's go back into our cam and we'll set the path position to seven. Okay, so if we did this correctly, if we're scrub, scrubbing through this, you can see that it is following that path. I'll get out of record mode. I'll preview this here. Okay, it is a little bit fast, but I think it'll work for the most part. We can adjust this from the animation window. Okay, so it is working as intended. Now there, what, there is one other thing that I wanna add in. It was in the original, which was to first off, have the player starting off on the ground. We don't want him in that kind of T pose as we're going through the, the hallway. But also, we also wanna be able to track the player. So as we come around the corner to the very end here, we wanna be able to actually look at our player. Now we can add in a look at at the very end. We don't wanna start it off with a look at target because the camera as it's going down the track is gonna continue trying to look at that target. So it's gonna be like facing the wall the whole time. 
So we only want to have it look at that specific target once we reach this area right here. So we'll add in a few more tracks. We're going to add in a animation track for the character. So that's the human player. And let's see, right about here, maybe right about here or so, we're going to start the animation of him just staying on the ground. And that's going to be looping over and over until we go into our timeline. So let's add in that animation. So once again, this is the lay loop that I created from the original animation of him standing up. And it just has the character on the ground. Okay, so I'm going to drag that animation clip into the timeline. Lay loop. And this is already set to looping, so I can just move it out here, out here. I zoom in on the character so we can see that it is playing properly. Okay, so when he comes around the corner, the character is already on the ground, and then we transition into that second timeline with him on the ground already as well. Okay, so the other thing that we want to do is we want to add in that look at as part of the animation for the fourth virtual cam. So we'll go back in here, and what we want to do is, let's see, maybe about right here is where we'll start the look at. So I'm going to hit record. We're going to go back into our virtual camera four, and we're going to add in our look at. So I want to start off slightly before that and add in a keyframe with this empty. So I'll right click in here, go to add key. And then right about here, we're going to add in another key, but this time we're going to be adding in the head. Okay, so there we go. We now track the character. So as we're coming through here, the camera should now start tracking the body or the head rather. And it's a little bit hard to see because the head basically stays in that same little box the entire time. But right at the very end, you'll see that it does go into that blue area and the, and the camera kind of moves down downward a bit. What we can do is move this out and continue the animation and continue the camera going down here. And you'll see that it starts moving downward a bit. Okay, so let's give us a, a preview again. I'll uncheck record. So LJ Simpson says, are you planning to offer this as a course topic? Uh, yes, I am very interested in creating more of a, like a, a film based course, kind of similar to the, the, the film course that we had for Blender. Uh, I want to create something like that using all the same tools that I've been covering in the live stream. So the timeline and going obviously more in depth than we're going now, but the timeline cinema machine, if possible, I like to cover octane as well. And maybe having some sort of a, actual film project that we could go through. And then maybe also adding in, uh, if you guys want, maybe something where we have uh, part of a game where we can actually play part of the game and then go into sequences where we have cutscenes and things of that sort. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Uh, let, us, let us know in the community, wherever you want. Just let us know that what you're interested in in learning about these different types of tools because I am very interested in, in creating an actual recorded course for this. Okay, so we're done with the animations for the camera and the human player. Let's give this a quick test. I'll actually play this. So I'm going to maximize this and let's see how this works. Okay, so we're going down the hallway a bit fast, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so that was a bit too fast. I do want to increase the... Uh, the amount of time it takes for that camera to go down that track, especially at the end, because it makes it very hard to be able to, to notice the subtle movement of the camera. So what I'll do is I'll double click on the track for the uh, VM cam four or the VCAM four rather. This will open it up in the animation window. I'll open this up. And what I'll do is I'll move this second keyframe out. Let's see, it's at roughly a little past five seconds. Let's just double that to uh, 10 seconds. It's at 10.01. I'll just try to move it over slightly. That's fine. I'm not too worried about that, but this should be a little bit slower. It's double the amount of time. OK. 
Okay, going down that hallway. It is it is a bit smoother and uh, slower now. And something happened at the very end there. I'm gonna close this animation window. Oh, because I did increase the time it takes for that camera to go through, we need to also move these things out a bit as well. So let's see, the ending of that animation is right here, and we'll have this, let me go ahead and extend, extend this out as well. So we also need to adjust the keyframe for when it actually tracks that character. So let's see, it starts tracking it right here. I'm just going to uh, remove that transform. I'll do this from the, I'm just gonna remove that keyframe because I don't want it to track the head right at that specific point. So I'll just remove both of them. Okay. So it's going through the hallway and we'll do it right about here. We'll add our first keyframe here. Okay, so I'll add the key here. Hmm. Oh, I need to hit record, duh. So let's see, right about here or so, we'll add in that keyframe. And then right here is where we'll add the actual head, which would add in our second keyframe of the tracking. Okay, then it should transition into that new timeline. And this is kind of one of those weird things right here. You can see as we're scrubbing through this, we know the animation should be playing right here, but it doesn't actually play properly. But if you were to actually play this, it would, it would actually work just fine. So I'm gonna hit record again to stop the recording process. Okay, and we'll play this in full view. Okay, so we're going down the hallway again, a little bit slower this time. It's a bit smoother. Okay, we're then gonna track the character as we're coming down, and then it transitions into that new uh, sequence. Oh, and this is another thing that I want to go over. So you can see right there, it stops. If we go back into our timeline, if we take a look at this, yeah, let's actually take a look at the other timeline. So this timeline right here, I'm gonna uncheck the uh, padlock. This timeline is about 24 seconds, roughly. So we need to make sure that that track is also 24 seconds in the timeline track, because right now it is five seconds. So after five seconds, it just stops. So we need to increase this to 24 seconds as well. And this will allow us to play the entire animation. And you can see it kind of spazzes out right there, but it's going through the, the, the motions. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to 23.59. I believe that's the exact amount. I'm not sure why it, it, it doesn't use the uh, duration of the, uh, the actual uh, timeline, but that's one of those little things that I had to figure out on my own. Okay, we'll give this another quick try. This should be working properly now. Okay, he's on the ground, and now we go into that animation. Okay, and there we go. That's the end of our sequence. Now it looks like we're just about out of time. I did want to go over a like a, a fade sequence, but basically that would be a an image, a UI image, it would be black, and then we would animate it 
having the alpha go down and then come back up if we want to fade to black. Uh, we don't have time for that. But if you guys have any questions on anything that we covered so far, we kind of just scratched the surface of what Cinemachine can do. Obviously, there are a number of different cameras in here. And I would like to cover all of these within an actual standalone course where we go more in depth with this. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the chat. Looks like there's a bit of a, a jump right here. And I think I know why, because we're going from not tracking to instantly tracking right after that. What I'll probably do is move this out a bit. That's a really rough cut right there. Not sure if we can adjust that, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, LJ Simpson says, when will the course be ready? Uh, well, we'll see. There's it's quite a bit I have uh, planned so far, but this is definitely something that I would be very interested in teaching. It is a, a an approachable subject, unlike a lot of the code-heavy stuff, because uh, this is fun to, to be able to create these types of films with Unity, especially with all the new stuff that Unity is coming out with. Uh, like I mentioned at the top of the, the live stream, there's a teaser that Unity put out called Book of the Dead, and it is... It's incredible. It has incredible lighting, incredible models, all that kind of stuff. And it, it rivals the Atom series. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend seeing it. Uh, I'm sure they use Timeline. I'm sure they use Cinemachine. But they've also gone over some of the new tools that are coming out with Unity 2018 for being able to control the rendering pipeline. Uh, so again, I recommend checking that out. If you guys don't have any other questions, then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. In our next live stream, we're going to be covering some post-processing. There is post-processing that we can do with Cinemachine. So if we have different cameras in different parts of our level here, maybe we can add some more bloom. Maybe we can add uh, uh, depth, stuff like that. We can add it into different types of post-processing profiles, and then we can uh, swap those out with different types of Cinemachine cameras. So we're going to be going over that and maybe a little bit of, of lighting and general setup process for making your visuals look a little bit better, especially if you're working with film. You want to try to get this as uh, clean looking and as beautiful as possible. So we're going to be going over some tips and tricks on how to improve that in the next live stream. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining this live stream. I'll see you next week in next week's live stream. Thanks.